Dinosaur number four. Name your Mimushi. Hi everyone, welcome back. And this is episode number four. Today we're talking about a couple of things. We're going to talk about. Can I say the latte effect? All right, that's one. And we'll talk also about. Kina. Kina cost averaging. Good. And stay tuned till the end of the video. We're going to talk. I'm going to explain the part about opening an account and investing in PNG again. Because yeah. there's so many questions still that are coming in about investing from PNG in different stocks. So, what do you know about the latte effect? To sacrifice something that you use in your daily lives. Yes, I guess that's as simple as it gets. It was a term coined by... David Beck! David Beck. And he's a financial uh, advisor, and he was he's teaching. A he was teaching his students, and a, one a woman. Yeah, she got up one day, and she was kind of complaining that, well, like I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to sac sacrifice anything to become a millionaire. Yeah, I don't want to go through all the pain, all this pain of becoming a millionaire. And he was like, well, what's a simple thing that you can give up every day? Latte. And a latte was a simple thing for her. It's like five, ten kina a day. So when you add up those kind of amounts, you can easily get over 150, over 250 kina per month. And so that's our perspective, that these are simple amounts to invest continuously in. David says in one of the seminars, a lady complained that what he was teaching was not practical because she barely survives by the end of the month and there is no way she can even save an extra $5 to invest. After analyzing her daily expenses, David found out that she spends around $5 every morning on coffee and a muffin and another $5 on snacks around 11 a.m. So every day she spent $10 by 11 a.m. and it's not even lunchtime yet. David asked the lady to guess how much money she could save by her retirement if she started investing half of that $10. She thought it would maybe be around seventy dollars or $80,000. After some calculations, the lady was shocked to find out that if she invested $5 a day with 10% yearly return, she could have $1.2 million by her retirement. Her daily coffee and muffin were costing her $1.2 million. This was a wake-up call for her to change. And this is how the latte factor was born. Now, some of you probably think that this doesn't apply to you because you don't drink coffee. And even if you did, you would never waste the kind of money she wasted on lattes. If you think like that, then you are missing the point, just like I did when I first heard about the latte factor. What the author is talking about here isn't just lattes. What he's talking about is how we don't realize how much money we waste on little things and how it can change our lives if we simply change our habits just a little bit. Your latte factor is probably not the latte, but it's the money you waste on bottled water, cigarettes, soft drinks, candy bars, fast food, memberships, etc. Whatever it happens to be, we all have a latte factor. We all throw away too much of our hard-earned money on unnecessary little expenditures without realizing how much they can add up to. The latte factor is different for different people. For you, it might be eating out every day or cigarettes. And for another person, it might be a second house or a second car that he doesn't use. In a few minutes, I will explain how you can find your latte factor. But first, let's look at this graph and see how investing $5 a day with a 10% return can look like in 40 years. This is the amount of money you are losing if you don't identify and change your latte factor. What does kilo cost averaging mean to you? Kilo cost averaging is consistently adding to your investment over a period, a long period of time. Exactly. So this I actually came across in a book called uh, The Intelligent Investor. It's one of Warren Buffett's favorite books he recommends. And it was just a, it's just as simple as keep on investing consistently in the market, like the S&P 500, and it doesn't matter if the stock goes high or goes low, 
over time, as you consistently invest, it averages out. So the rate of return is still going to end up being as good as the performance of the stock or the market. Dollar cost averaging requires a regular contribution, often from a paycheck, that is allocated to your retirement or investment account on a fixed schedule, perhaps every week, bi-weekly, or monthly. Others may choose to do the transfer manually due to the fact that they're self-employed or their employer might not offer investment services. This method can work as well, but requires more time, thought, and effort, which isn't always a good thing. This is especially less desirable for people who tend to get nervous as the market fluctuates. Market fluctuations are normal, so taking emotions out of the equation by using an automatic investment strategy can be beneficial. Dollar cost averaging entails investing a fixed dollar amount of money in the same stock or fund over time. In other words, the same dollar amount of an investment will be purchased on a regular basis, regardless of the asset's price. This might mean buying the same share monthly or weekly or on any fixed schedule. This is a fantastic investment strategy for everyday investors because it allows them to profit from market dips by purchasing more shares when the price is lower without the nerves that some investors often have when they see the value of their investments dip. For example, assume an investor deposits $1,000 on the first of each month into index fund XYZ, beginning in January. Like any investment, this fund bounces around in price from month to month. The investor keeps steadily putting $1,000 into the fund on the first of each month, while the number of shares the amount of money buys varies. In January, $1,000 bought 50 shares. In February, it bought 62.5 shares. In March, it bought 83.3 shares. In April, it was 58.2 shares, and in May, it was 43.48 shares. Just five months after beginning to contribute to the fund, the investor owns 298.14 shares of the index. The investment of $5,000 has turned into $6,857. The average price of those shares is $16.77. Based on the current price of the shares, the investment of $5,000 has turned into $6,857. If the investor had spent the entire $5,000 at once at any given time during this period, the total profit might be higher or lower. But by staggering the purchases, the risk of the investment has been greatly reduced. If the investor purchased all shares on one day, he might have gotten lucky if the share price was low. But he also could have been unlucky and bought on a day when the shares were very expensive. So in the latte effect, let's say you invest in every month from uh, the money that you save, right? Yes. And so, What's the most important thing in investing? The most important thing in investing. What's the most powerful tool in investing? Compounding. Right. So, what's the power of compounding? The <laughs> power of compounding is when things add. Hmm? When things add to a number that the other, that the other addition gave you. Yeah. So, like one plus one two, two plus two four, four yeah. plus four eight, eight plus eight sixteen. Okay. Sixteen plus sixteen thirty two, thirty two plus thirty two um sixty four, sixty four plus sixty four one hundred twenty eight, one hundred twenty eight plus one hundred okay. twenty eight is two hundred fifty six. Okay, so <laughs> we get the picture. <laughs> okay, so that's a very high um, rate. That's a hundred percent. Okay. But we're invested in Kina Securities, and we understand that Kina Securities has consistently given us at least like 10% in dividends. So dividends is the money that the company gives back to the shareholders every year. And if you have a rate of return of 10%, you still can get to some really large numbers, right? Here's the story. Jia started investing at nine years old, while the brother said, nah, I'm Jacques. gonna... Jacques. So the brother, Jacques, Jacques said, nah, I'm gonna have my soft drinks, I'm gonna go and eat some ice cream, I'm gonna spend all my money, I'll, I'll start investing later when I'm older. So Jacques started investing when he was 19, and Jia 
stop investing, will stop contributing to the investments at 19 and just let the money compound for the next 20 years. Now, let's say 30 years. And Jack starts contributing at 19 years old and starts contributing from the next 30 years all the way to the end. And that's over a period of 30 years. And Gia's already stopped investing or added money to the investments and just letting the money compound. Who do you think is going to have the most money at the end? He. Why? Because even though he started um, later mm -hmm. than the girl, mm -hmm. he still um, compounded and invested for a longer period of time mm -hmm. because um, the girl only compounded for nine, for 10 years. Well. But then, but then um, he started at 19 mm -hmm. and now um, at 13 years. So he is now to learn this would be so you're saying the person that invested for the longer period is going to have the most money at the end? Well, this is the big surprise because actually the one that started at nine, girl. the girl, Cold. she ends up with the most money. And I'm going to show you a video right now that explains this even better. If you are young, this graph might be life changing for you. In the graph, you see three people, Billy, Susan, and Kim. All three invest $3,000 per year, which is roughly $8.3 per day. And all three get a 10% annual return on their investments. Billy starts investing at the age of 15 and only invests for five years until the age of 19. Then he simply stops investing and lets his money grow without adding anything extra. Susan starts investing at the age of 19 and invests for eight years until the age of 26. Finally, Kim starts investing at the age of 27 and keeps investing until the age of 65. She invests $3,000 every year as Billy and Susan do, but she does it for 39 years. Here comes the big question. Who has more money by the age of 65? Well, if you think Kim has the most amount of money because she invested the longest period and the biggest amount, then you're wrong. She actually has the least among the three. Here are the numbers for the age of 65. Kim has roughly $1.3 million. She invested $117,000 in total. The investment period is 39 years. Susan has $1.5 million. She invested $24,000 in total within eight years. Finally, Billy has $1.6 million. He invested only $15,000. The investment period is five years. As you can see, Billy has the least amount of time and money invested, but despite that, he ended up with the biggest amount of money. Why? Simply because he started earlier. This is the power of time in investing. So you can see the secret is actually starting very early. The sooner you start compounding, the bigger the amount's gonna be at the end. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Looking you behind. And if you have any questions on anything we're talking about, please and comment down below. Subscribe, like, click the notification bell. And we'll see you at the next video. See you at the next video.